Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Bears Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, some people say that life is all about timing, and that actually applies to magic as well. Well, I mean, like timing, like I need to play this instant then. Yes, that too. But when it comes to picking up cards for your deck, whether you're building a new deck or upgrading a deck, it can be about timing and when you pick up certain cards, and I'm urging you, pick up these awesome cards right now. So, I'm going to kind of cheat to start, but what I want to say with this for the first four cards I'm bringing up, these are gold-bordered cards, which are technically, according to the rules, not legal in Commander or any format. But the only reason they're not legal is because they're technically not legal for tournament formats, really. And, um, you know, Commander's not a tournament format, so, like, I've never had anyone be ever upset about anyone ever anywhere using a gold bordered card. Every single person I've ever interacted with in Magic, in Commander, has been 100% fine with using gold bordered cards. That being said, before picking these four up, check with your playgroup first, check with those at your LGS first, but for the vast majority of players out there in Commander, they are all very reasonable people that understand that gold border cards are basically the exact same thing. And Wizards just doesn't want to get in trouble because they reprinted some cards that were on the reserve list in gold bordered. And that's kind of why they, you know, have this whole thing, you know, going on with like, oh yeah, don't play those. Those aren't legal. Ha ha ha. Anyways, Wrath of God, a sorcery for four mana in white. Destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. The term Wrath comes from this. Yes. It is just, hey, blow up all the creatures for four mana. Cool. Yeah, it's a very, very good card. A very, very popular card in Commander. The gold border version is just under $0.98. A fantastic pickup. I think the, uh, it's been reprinted a decent amount lately, but I think the actual regular versions, the non-gold bordered, are still around like two or so dollars. So, yeah, save some money right here. Next up, one that has definitely, definitely, definitely gone up in price over the years, Voltaic Key. Just at 86 right now for the gold border version. Pay one, tap to untap the target artifact. Or just, I guess, any target artifact. You can technically untap this one for a single mana. This is a crazy good card in artifact-centric strategies. Maybe even ones that have certain artifacts that have, let's just say, you know, like tap for three, tap for four, whatever it is. This can just be a mana rock. I mean, even if you're just pairing it with Soul Ring, this becomes a mana rock with that, essentially. It helps you gain a lot of value. And, of course, if you have a commander that has a tap ability, too, this can be great in that deck. Great for artifact-centric strategies, 86 cents. I'm pretty sure this one's around like four or five dollars, three or four dollars or so. So not, you know, a giant discount, you know, essentially for this card in gold border. Next up, Pattern of Rebirth. Speaking of a giant discount, this one's definitely around like five dollars or so for the non-gold border versions. 86 cents for this one. Enchant creature. This is an aura. Four, three, and a green. One enchant creature is put in a graveyard from play. That creature's controller may search the library for a creature card for that card into play. If that player does, they shuffle their library. Yeah, essentially, you just have this on one of your creatures, and then all of a sudden, maybe you've got a way to sacrifice that creature. Maybe it's like Sakura Tribe Elder, you put this on. You can sacrifice it, or if you've got like Viserys here in play, you have a way to sacrifice it. You take that creature out, you go to for your best creature out of your deck for four mana and get it right into play. Yeah, that's quite good. This obviously can work in combo synergies as well, but yeah, even just for a creature-based strategy, or like an enchantment-based strategy that has certain creatures in there, obviously, they can utilize the aura in a different way. Yeah, a great way to pay four mana, essentially, and as long as this lands... Tutor out, once you get that creature gone, tutor out your best creature out of your deck or whatever creature you need in that situation. And then finally, another card that's around like 3 or $4 for non-gold bordered, Spell Shock. One that's just $0.48 cents for the gold bordered version. Enchantment 4, 2, and a red. When any player success successfully casts a spell, 2 damage to them. Basically, whenever a player casts a spell, hey, take 2 damage. So, yeah, this is great for group slug type strategies. Not group hug. Group hug wouldn't be like, hey, you cast a spell. Boom. Your opponent's like, ow, it's not very friendly. And you're like, group hug. And that's not what that means. Um, yeah, group slug strategies were like, everyone's going down, including me. Everyone's got to go down. Let's burn the world. It's basically what you're doing with this kind of a card. I mean, obviously, with group slug type strategies, you type typically have ways to take more advantage of this than your opponent's like, oh, but like it's double damage to you all and not to me. Or other kinds of effects that get them down quicker. So yeah, Spell Shock, a very interesting card. And again, one that is very budget friendly for the Cold Border version. But now let's move on to the non-Gold Bordered cards. And ones that are $1 or less. We're going to start off at the tippy top of that list at $1. 
Goblin Bombardment. Now, I will point out that some of these are going to be showing off like very specific art versions of the card. Sometimes different art versions are a lot cheaper, so I'm like, make sure you keep that in mind. I mean, like the D&D one specifically typically are like much, much cheaper. Like Decanter Venomous Water is like $3 cheaper than the other versions. So art versions are something that you need to be looking at if you're a budget player like me and you're like, oh yeah, I don't really care what art version I have. The cards all do the exact same thing. Kind of like gold bordered, right? Essentially, yeah, it doesn't matter. So just pick up whatever the cheapest one is. And I like the art on this one. Enchantment for one in a red sacrifice creature, one damage to any target. So this is an amazing sacrifice outlet. Aristocrat style strategies can love this kind of a card or just any kind of like a pinging strategy as well. Uh, Gyrus, now what, what's the one that's an is it that likes to, likes to deal like one exact damage? Whatever that one is. But yes, also like threatened decks like Hoffrey. Yeah, go steal your opponent's creatures, sacrifice them as well. See a lot of different, you know, applications of this. This is a combo card as well. A very, very, very good card. Free sacrifice outlets are always going to be in demand with certain kinds of decks in Commander. Moving on. Speaking of sacrificing, Wonder. You want to get this in your graveyard. It's a very... Oh, I love the art on this one, though. It's from back in my childhood. I love this card. 2-2, two, two, Incarnation with Flying for 4 mana in blue. As long as it's in your graveyard, you control an island creature control of Flying. Yeah, this is a crazy cool card. These kind of incarnations, I love the old incarnations. They are really cool. I mean, you've got things like flying. You've got things like, what is it? Haste with anger. You've got trample with brawn and green. You've got first strike. Yay. I mean, it's okay. And then you've got swamp walk, I think, for filth. Regardless, Wonder is one of the most usable ones out there. I'd say this one and Anger are the two most used. Anger is very, very good with haste. That being said, Flying is fantastic. Giving all of your creatures evasion. And again, one that, like, okay, it can be interacted with, right? If it's in your graveyard, your opponent can, like, remove your graveyard with, like, Bajuka Bog and sure. But, like, that's a more specific kind of removal than, like, this just being a creature on the field. That's much easier to remove. If this is just like, hey, I'm four mana, your creatures have Flying. Yay. That'd still be good, but it also would just be like, oh, okay, um, yeah, I terminate that creature. It's more likely your opponents have removal for things on the board than things in your graveyard, so when this is just hiding out in your graveyard, as long as you have that island, you just automatically have, like, this immediate, I mean, it's kind of like an enchantment, like, aura base that's just out in your graveyard. It's just, like, sitting there, and it's like, you can't touch it. It's fine. Creatures have flying. Being able to give, like, a free levitate, that is amazing. That is impactful. And, again, you don't even have to play this to actually get the effect. Sometimes, yeah, you'll play it. You'll get rid of it in one way or another. Great. You, like, block with it or sacrifice it, whatever. Other ways, you're like, oh, okay, cool. I played a loot spell. I draw a card. I discard a card. Let's discard Wonder. You're in my graveyard. Or, like, I milled you into my graveyard. Different ways to get it to your graveyard. When it's there, again, great evasion for your creatures. Again, pretty much for free. Next up, Borok Battlehorns. One that is evasion that's not for free, but very good. An equipment for two. 99 cents right now. Equipped creature has trample and can't be blocked by more than one creature. Equip one. This card gets better and better and better the more menace things are out there because menace is like the exact opposite. Menace is like, no, you can't block unless you're blocking with two or more creatures. And this is like, no, you have to only block with one creature. Both things essentially can be true at the same time, where it's like, okay, cool. Um, Yeah, you can't block me at all then. I'm unblockable. Trampling, though, as well. I mean, even if you don't have Menace, you don't have another way to get through, that's fine. That's great. It's forcing an opponent to only block with one creature, so they can't, like, team block and take out your creature. But also, you can trample over that one creature. So it's like, you can't jump block me. You can't team block me. Good luck trying to stop my massive creature. So good, obviously, in, like... Voltron type strategies or any kind of a commander that really wants to get through and again maybe has menace or some other form of evasion as well next up a very specific janky awesome amazing card reincarnation 99 cents for this amazing it was some adorable art it's like this soldier died and then here's a tiny little weird plant thing okay anyways instant for one green green Choose target creature. When that creature dies this turn, return a car creature card from its owner's graveyard to the battlefield under the control of that creature's owner. Very specific, very weirdly worded, but basically, it's kind of like a weird feign death type effect. Uh, I say feign death, that's like just the typical one in black where it's like, okay, creature dies this turn, bring it right back instead. Maybe it comes back and play tap, whatever it is. That being said, this one's slightly different where it's like, yeah, you can essentially say, okay, my creature's about to die. I'd like them to come back, which is... A way to use and abuse an ETB potentially, being like, okay, cool, yeah, the creature's gonna die anyways, all right, uh, it's gonna die, it's gonna come back, and was a terrestrial, whatever, I get to blow up three more things, great, good for me. But also, you could be like, okay, like, my tiny little useless creature's about to die, I've got this amazing giant creature in my graveyard, okay, cool, oh no, my creature died, 
Now it's something else. Something massive comes into play instead. So it's a very weird, like, spell you don't see in green, like, ever. It's kind of like a feign death slash reanimation type effect. It's very, very strange. Very, very amazing. Anyways, next up. Notion Thief. This is one where it's not... It kind of is a card where you, like, maybe... Depending on how you're building the deck, you kind of need to ask your playgroup first where it's like, you can't just like spring a notion thief on them and be like, wheel, ha 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 Why are you all mad at me? I'm confused. Uh, notion thief, a three one human rogue with flash for four mana into mirror. If an opponent would draw a card, except the first they draw on each of the draw steps and said that player skips that draw and you draw a card. Y yes, uh, okay, so again, just at a base level, just like someone casts like a giant draw spell and you're like, gotcha, cool, I stole your draw from you. Haha, -ha, it's mine now. Good for me. That's fine, in my opinion, in Commander. But some playgroups aren't exactly okay when you're like, okay, I flash in Notion Thief before my turn. Next turn, Windfall. Ha 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 ha. You all get to draw like one card, discard your entire hand, and I get to draw like 20 plus cards. Yay! And the game's over because now you're just top decking. So some groups are not okay with that. So please ask your playgroup first. That being said, 99 cents is a good value for this really good card. Next up, Manate of Abaddon, also at 99 cents. Sorcerer, 4 mana in black. Choose target creature you control. Destroy all creatures power less than that creature's power. It's a really good, flexible board wipe for the right deck out there. If you have a power matters strategy, if you've got like a bunch of big creatures like my Mr. Orpheo deck does, especially like after combat when you already make something massive, you can say, oh, okay, cool. Um... I'm going to make it so that uh, this is the bar. This, you know, six power, whatever it is, is the bar. Most of my creatures, if not all my creatures, will survive. And basically, all your creatures are going to get taken out. So it can be a very one-sided, again, flexible board wipe. And, yeah, if you have a commander that's a Voltron commander, you're like, it's going to be the biggest in play because it's a 21-21 or whatever. Then, yes, you're like, okay, cool. Let's just wipe out everything else. I clear the path for my commander, and it's coming through. So it's a very good, flexible board wipe indeed. Next up. Keeper of Progenitus. Here's a question. Do you like mana? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're in green, so you like mana, right? Okay, are you in Naya Colors? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you might want to consider this one. A 1-3 up Druid. Do you like Elves or Druids? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, four mana in green. Where a player taps a Mountain Force or Plains for mana, that player adds one mana to their mana pool of any type that land produced. Keep in mind, yes, this does benefit your opponents as well if they're playing Mountains, Force, or Plains. That being said, you might play the playgroup, and a lot of players in there don't play with a lot of basic lands or, you know, land types of forest, mountain, plains. So, therefore, you're going to take more advantage of it. I mean, typically, if you're building around a card like this, you're going to take more advantage of it than your opponents are because you built your deck to do a certain thing. Like, in my Villainous Whelp type deck, I mean, if that was, like, three colors in this, which is all about getting a lot of mana, copying spells, that kind of stuff, cool. I want to produce a lot of mana. This is a way to do it. Even though there might be a downside to this card where it helps my opponents out potentially, it's going to help me out more in the long run. So it's one that you kind of have to weigh, essentially, and be like with your playgroup, like, huh, my one friend over there likes to play with mono green a lot. Probably shouldn't double up their mana. But yes, this is a card that can really help you out. Next up, speaking of big mana mono green, Archetype of Endurance, a 6-5 boar enchantment creature for 6 green green. Creatures you control have hexproof. Creatures you opponents control lose hexproof and can't have or gain hexproof. Now, Wizards has kind of phased hexproof out, essentially. I mean... There are certain, like, very specific types of Hexproof that we have these days, like Hexproof from these things, or Hexproof on the turn it comes down, that kind of stuff as well. But, like, Wizards, after all the Boggles things, kind of like, ah, and I love I love Hexproof, personally. Like, I had a Glade Cover Scout deck back in the day in Standard, and I loved it. Like, little mini Boggles, it's fun for me. Maybe not for my opponent, because they can't target it, and they get very frustrated. But anyways, Hexproof is an incredibly powerful thing, saying, hey, all my things... You can't touch. You can't touch them with any targeted spells or abilities. You can't touch them. I can. Lightning Greaves. I mean, I was going to say Lightning Greaves. Swift of Bootsies play for a reason. Lightning Greaves is Shroud, which is technically worse, right, when it comes to, not the card itself, but the mechanic. It's worse because you can't target yourself, but I can target my things. You can't target my things. Also, on top of that, if you have any extra things, now I can target them. It's removing that from the equation. So, let's say big creature. That is a lot for you. A great protection spell. Next up. Miss of Lorien? I don't know. I'm not, not the great on Lord of the Rings names. Sorcery for two and a blue. Replicate for a single blue mana. Return target non-land permanent and each other non-land permanent. The same mana value as that permanent to their owner's hands. This is a crazy good effect. This is an effect that says, hey, okay. Again, I can basically one-sided board wipe potentially with this. Or like get very specific. Again, if like one player 
I mean, keep in mind, like, with tokens, it's just a way to get rid of every token in play, essentially, right? You just say, like, okay, I got rid of one token, they're all at zero, they're all gone. I guess, technically, rules are out there, right? If you create a creature token copy of another creature that has a mana value, it has that mana value, too, so keep that in mind. That being said, I'm talking about, like, 1-1 one, one soldiers or treasure tokens. You can be like, okay, three mana, get rid of all of those. But also, like, just like, oh, okay, I've got a deck that has, like, maybe a higher curve, right? I've got higher mana value cards out in play. My opponents have a lot of lower ones. Cool. I bounce all your low the ground things. I can replicate this to essentially get a copy of it. And again, essentially get a different target for the copy. So I can say, okay, at one mana, at two mana, at three mana, all those things are gone. Most of my things are at four, five, six mana, whatever. So it can be a very one-sided, really flexible board wipe for you. Or again, if you just need to be like, oh, I need to panic, get rid of that. And maybe a couple of things at three mana, I can do that as well. Next up, I have not seen this one underneath the dollar for a long, 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 long time. I think it's been reprinted a couple times lately. But anyways, finally, Knight Exemplary, 2-2 Human Knight for three mana in white. First strike, other Knight creatures you control get plus one and indestructible. Are you playing Knight Tribal? Yes. You probably want this card. It's very, very good to protect your team. I mean, even if you just have like a commander that might be a knight, this could be usable in it as well, of course, as another way to protect your commander. Or of course, if you've got like tribal, tribal, like Lord tribal, where it's like, okay, like I have changeling type effects that turn all my creatures into changelings. And then they have all the things like Masquerade Nexus, essentially. Then also this could really help as well because this would give all your other creatures indestructible too. Next up. Empowered Auto Generator. I love this card. Artifact for four mana. Enters the battlefield, tap, put a tap, put a charge counter on it. An X mana of any one color, X the number of charge counters on it. This essentially just builds throughout the game further and further and further. It is a slow mana rock. Yes. At four mana, typically, I do say typically, not always, you are getting a mana rock that comes into play. It can tap for at least two. I mean, like Thran Turbine. Is that the one? No, Thran. What's the three and one? Turbine's something different. Anyways, <laughs> the, the whatever the three one is that costs four and taps for three colors. There you go. But again, like base level, you got like Sisse's Ring, like those that enter the battlefield untapped, tap for two, or ones that do enter the battlefield tap and tap for colors. This one can give you, you know, different colors. It does take time to build up though. You can't tap it right away. Obviously, you have a way to untap it first. If you do have untapped effects though, this works incredibly. Again, an artifact centric deck or a proliferate type deck, this can be a star. This in my uh, Deep Globe Skate deck uh, was target number one for my opponents because I got like 40 counters on this thing because it's like, okay, yeah, I double it up again, double it up again, double it up again. If you've got a counter-based strategy, a proliferate-based strategy, a charge counter-based strategy, an untapped strategy, definitely consider this one. Or if you just have like a high mana value command, you're like, I need all the ramp I can get. Moving on. This one is so underrated. This is Bellowing Tangle Worm. I love this card. 4-4, four, four, Intimidate Worm for five mana in green. Other green creatures you control have Intimidate. Intimidate is such a good effect. This creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. If you are playing this card and you're playing against opponents that don't have green creatures in play or artifact creatures in play, they are in trouble. Because chances are you're playing this on a board where you have a lot of other green creatures in play as well. Your creatures are basically unblockable, if not very, very hard to block for your opponents. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing against three mono green decks or three colorless decks, sure, it doesn't do anything. But what are the chances of that happening? Chances are at least one or two of your opponents aren't playing a lot of creatures of those colors or colorless, I should say. So, yeah, you've got a lot of ways to get through with that. Mirror Pool. It's a very good land. Enter the battlefield. Tap, taps for a colors. Pay two in a colorless. Tap, sacrifice it. Copy and insert sorcery. Choose our for the top. Copy. Pay four in a colorless. Tap, sacrifice it. Create tokens. Copy to our creature control. Very good, kind of just like a very slow land, but one that can give you a lot of value. Again, copying a spell out of nowhere can be huge. Also, copying a creature out of nowhere can be absolutely massive, especially for certain strategies like populate strategies as well. Keep in mind, yes, you do need another colorless source to actually be able to activate this, so make sure you're keeping that in mind when you decide what deck you're putting it into. Hellish Rebuke. This card always reminds me of Eddie because of Eddie's D&D character. Anyways, instant for two and a black until end of turn. Permit to your opponent's control gain when this permit deals uh, damage to the player who casts Hellish Rebuke, sacrifices permanent, you lose two life. Yeah, this card is very spicy and can really turn things around. Again, you can kind of egg someone on to be like, all right, yeah, yeah, huh, attack me, ha, ha, ha. And then they do and you're like, okay. I play this. Goodbye to all your things that hit me and drain you a ton. This can be very effective, especially against certain strategies. I mean, if your opponent's playing like a go wide strategy, like a bunch of tokens, like small tokens, like, okay, I swing with my soldiers at you. And you're like, oh no. Okay. I cast this. And all of a sudden they're like, no. And then they lose it. Keep in mind though, this also counts again. It says permanent steel damage. So it has, it counts like any other kind of permanence that actually deal damage to you. So like 
group slug type permanence or like a gutter type type permanent as well it doesn't have to be combat damage so make sure you're keeping that in mind too yeah life loss synergies can really care about this one as well archetype imagination a 3-2 human wizard for six mana for 97 cents creature control of flying creature bonus control lose flying can never gain flying it's kind of like um i mean archetype the other archetype i talked about earlier endurance kind of mixed with wonder again it's like your creatures are pretty much unblockable your opponent's creatures you know can't be unblockable in, in flying terms now there is one small exception right like if my creatures are flying and yours are flying you can't block essentially except unless you have creatures that have reach not many creatures out there have reach that players are playing so keep that in mind basically this is six mana make your army unblockable which is absolutely huge and again take away your opponent's evasion as well seasons past i love this card it's so good sorcery for a six mana in grain return any number of cards with different converted mana costs from your graveyard to your hand put seasons past the bottom of tomorrow's library is this for every kind of deck out there absolutely not do you have a variety of converted mana costs in your deck yeah if you do cool utilize this card it's crazy good six mana might be a good amount but again when you're talking about like bringing two things back out of your graveyard to your hand typically i do say typically that's going to cost you five mana or so like restock essentially at six mana though with this one you're like oh i get back probably four plus cards maybe even more out of my graveyard into my hand a massive recursion type effect like this one there's also weird combos i believe that can work with this one too because it goes on the bottom of your library as well so make sure you're keeping that in mind but yeah 96 cents is a steal this amazing card steve sakura tribe elder a 1-1 one -one snake shaman for one and a green 96 cents this one was budget friendly when i started then not budget friendly then budget friendly then budget friendly. It, it has gone back and forth so many times i cannot count it is underneath the dollar again. Pick it up. It's an amazing card. Sacrifice it. Subscribe for a base land card with the card and play tap. Then show up your library. Does anyone else feel bad for Steve? I kind of do. Because Steve's like, hi, little buddy. You're my friend. And Steve's like, oh, okay. Th thanks for playing me. All right. I hope I can do good for you. All right. All right. I'm here. I'm ready for combat next turn. You're like, ha, huh, sure. You're going to get to next turn. Steve's like, what does that mean? N nothing don't worry about it steve and then it comes to your uh, you know right before your turn and right before that opponent and they're like okay i passed turn you're like wait before you're done with your turn i sacrifice steve and steve's like we had a deal no it's basically just a rampant growth as a one one which is amazing obviously moving on mana gorge or hydra one one hydra with trample for three mana whatever a player casts a spell get a counter on it i do shorthand plus wilson counter sorry so counter anyways uh 96 cents for this gem yeah in commander you can I'm not saying chuck it in any deck, but this can be a threat in any deck. If you just want a threat that is low to the ground and you're willing to wait just a little bit, you're like, okay, cool. Throw it in play. See what happens. Yay! You just put it in play. And kind of like Torian Mahler, it's like, okay, I'm going to grow. But including your spells as well and with Trample. So better than Torian Mahler. Though, I mean, I guess that's a changeling, so it can work in like travel decks as well. But still... This one is incredible. Again, this can just for three mana become the biggest threat on the board that again can get damage through because of that trample. It also, of course, works really well with power matter synergies, plus plus one synergies, Hydra tribal, that kind of stuff as well. It's a crazy good card. Again, not saying just chuck it in any deck, but it's a fun card. It's a very fun card and it's very powerful. Many strategies out there. Moving on. Underrealm Lich, 94 cents. 4-3 Zombie Elf Shaman. This definitely didn't used to be anywhere near 94 cents. It's 5 mana in Golgari. If you would draw a card and take a look at the top three cards of your library, then put one in your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Pay for life. It gains indestructible life turn. Tap it. This one is such a cool card. It's kind of like I talked about tomorrow, a zombie's familiar on a recent episode. I think that's the full name, right? So it's tomorrow. Anyways. It's somewhat similar to that one where it's like, okay, out of the top three cards in my library, I get the best one every single time whenever I am deciding to draw a card with whatever ability I have, whatever card I have, just my normal draw on a turn. I get extra selection with my value so I can get the best card out of the top three every single time. Also, though, for certain decks out there, I can throw the cards into my graveyard and that can be beneficial. Again, if you have certain graveyard type synergies, great. Get things in your graveyard, utilize them in one way or another. And also, this is very hard to deal with. This is indestructible whenever you want it to be, as long as you have the life to do so. Four life is a decent amount, yes. But also, the amount of value this can give you, and actually can just be a good blocker as well. Yeah, you actually just do that. I mean, it does tap, but I mean, during combat, if you did it. Anyways, you know what I mean. So essentially, being able to say, you know what, I've got a very hard to deal with value engine out there, that also, I guess, in uh, life swap synergies can be quite good as well. You're like, okay, I put myself down to one. Okay swap lives thank you anyways a very cool card moving on creeping renaissance i love this card 92 cents source for five mana choose a permanent type bring back all those cards you grave with your hand flash it back for seven mana we talked about earlier with uh my brain's not working seasons pass there we go 
getting back, you know, again, at five mana, you typically are getting back like two things out of your graveyard. Typically, this one is a bit more specific. You need to have things that share a type. But again, if you're playing this on a deck, you probably have a heavy creature based strategy or heavy artifact based strategy, heavy land based strategy, whatever it is get all those back again you get like 10 plus cards back pretty easily with the right deck out there you be like okay cool five mana an amazing amount of value for me can flash it back to do it again so even like in a mill based strategy this can work out very well because you can like end up milling this in your graveyard and you're like oh, okay cool yeah i can utilize that might cost me a little bit more but now i can get back all those things that i just milled 92 cents a steal for this one fight or flight this one is hilarious and it does not seem near enough play i love it and champion for four mana and white Getting each opponent's combat phase separate all creatures that player controls into face up piles. Only creatures in a pile of their choice may attack this turn. Now, in like a normal, normal format, I guess Commander now is the normal format, right? Being the most popular one. But like in your typical standard format, you know, your one one on one format, not that good of a card. It's like, okay, you get to attack with like half your creatures each turn, okay? I mean, it might be okay, but like it's so much better in Commander. Because first of all, again, it's every single opponent's combat phase. It doesn't matter if they're attacking you or not. Okay, you get to do it. So you can actually make deals with other opponents too. You can make deals with the opponent that you're separating creatures in the pile. It's like, okay, like, hey, so you've got your army, right? What are you planning on doing with that? Are you going to be attacking me or attacking elsewhere? Because if you're going to be attacking me, I'm separating it this way, okay? And you're going to be like half as effective. So maybe don't do that. And then you can be like, okay, like attack that player over there. And if you attack them, I'll separate that into uh, all the creatures and none of the creatures. And you get to attack with all your creatures. So you can make political deals with that. You also can like gain the favor of other players as well by actually like, I'm slowing this player down half and half, okay? You save yourself a little bit. It can be a very group huggy, like my pillow fort type strategy as well. But like, it's just one that can throw chaos into a game when players are like, I've got my massive army, I shall win. And you're like, slight defensive spell and they're like ah what do i do it's a very cool card moving on rap and vigor this is a card i highlighted a long 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 time ago like right when the channel started and i started doing these types of episodes i highlighted this one because this one was i i can't remember the exact price of it but it was very cheap now it's 90 cents again under dollar finally it's been forever instant for one in a green regenerate each creature you control being able to save your team for two mana is crazy good crazy powerful i mean is this heroic intervention no heroic intervention is very expensive and pretty much always will be for a reason giving all your things hexproof and indestructible for two mana again all your things is huge but being able to save every single one of your creatures for just two mana that is massive i mean regeneration is not as good as indestructible but still very very good pure still paladin speaking of two mana 83 cents a 2-2 human knight for two mana in white Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield on your control, you may draw a card. Equipment you control have equip zero as long as you control three more artifacts. This thing is a gem in equipment-based strategies, obviously. I mean, again, any single time an equipment enters the battlefield, you are drawing cards. You're drawing an absurd amount of cards for a two-mana creature that stays in play. And also, again, you cheat on your mana cost for your equip. It's absurd. Again, there are certain ones out there like that one, whatever, Giant's Hammer, whatever that one is, Colossal Hammer. It costs like 10 to equip, and you're like, zero <laughs> for free. Yeah, let's put that on there. So again, value upon value, mana and card draw. What's not to love about a card like this? So I hope that you enjoyed the cards on this episode. If you are interested in any of them, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below. Again, with those gold barter ones specifically, I do want to urge you, okay? Make sure you check with your play group first ahead of time. Do not just assume that they're okay with it. Though, again, I will say that I have never run into a single person ever from all my commander games out there that has ever not been okay with me playing with a gold bordered card or others playing with a gold bordered card when that comes up as well. So make sure you check those out as well if they're okay with them. Because, again, you can find some gems. You can find some real deals when you're like, okay, alternative art versions or different border versions, essentially, with cards. So make sure you keep that in mind. Check out that card list link in the description below. And, of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.